Good morning, everyone. The Bible reading today is Luke 5, 1 to 11, the first disciples. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out to where it is deeper and let down your net to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon, both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realised what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was a for he was all struck by the number of fish that they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning all. Today's topic is about Jesus' call for his followers to be the fishers of men. I'd like to reflect on the meaning of following our Lord Jesus in these challenging times and in our own context and to go a bit deeper into the Lord's call for us to be fishers of men. In other words, to be the ones who might be the channel through which God's saving grace flows to save the lost and to give hope for those who need hope in their lives. I believe today's story in Luke's Gospel will help us to reflect on our own context in 2022 in terms of um, the challenges, stresses and the struggles many in the society are experiencing at the moment. And especially those who have faith in Jesus, who would no doubt have been walking through a not easy faith journey over the past couple of years, might be able to identify themselves with the disciples in the story today. I believe it is not that difficult for us to understand how Simon Peter and other men in the story today would have felt after their failed efforts to catch fish. Verse 5 of the passage today, it says, Master, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. As you would know, the Sea of Galilee would have been the most familiar place for them. And they knew how to fish because that is what they had been doing for a living for many years. But on that particular day, when Jesus was there to teach people, they were not able to catch anything. I believe it might be regarded as one of those unlucky days, but it certainly tells us that our own familiar context can also be changed overnight unexpectedly. It might be our job, our relationship with others, our health, our future, and virtually every aspect of our lives. I believe this COVID pandemic has certainly changed and challenged our familiarities which we believe would last as long as there are no major life challenges. The familiar ways we respond to things don't seem to work the way they should work, or the areas we believed familiar to us have turned into something we need to learn anew. The skills or talents we used to enjoy and to feel confident with might have become not that useful anymore or completely become a passé, outdated. And our definition of church community, 
and other communities we are part of over the past couple of years have also been challenged significantly. Boundaries have been blurred, core values have been compromised. During this pandemic, most of us would have thought about giving up willingly or unwillingly our familiar patterns of thinking and behaviors and also the ways of doing things. No doubt all of us would have felt a sense of frustration, isolation, anxiety, or helplessness. And for some of us, it might be an ongoing challenge. Master, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Master, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. I believe these words of Simon Peter summarize as well what we and the world might feel in these times. This pandemic has certainly challenged us to rethink and to reimagine our way of life and to deeply reflect on our relationship with Jesus and the depth of our faith in the Lord. And this pandemic has added enormous pressure on us to make a kind of change in direction. But many find it difficult to figure out what a light, right direction might look like. And for us here, it would mean what our Lord's will for us would look like as an individual and as a church. So with this in mind, let us open our hearts and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord speaks to us through the passage today. Verse 2. He noticed two empty boats at the, water, at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. After the unsuccessful night, the fishermen were washing their nets again, as they had been doing as a part of their routine in the morning, without knowing whether they might be able to catch fish the next day or the next week. But after Jesus had finished teaching, he told Simon to go out where it is deeper and let down the nets they had washed. I believe what it tells us is that when people feel frustrated or overwhelmed by some unexpected challenges in life, just like the highly experienced fishermen catch nothing after spending whole night in the sea, many would want to give up on what they have been doing or trying to do or what they have been investing their time on. But what the passage seems to tell us in terms of our faith journey is that we are encouraged to keep on doing what we believe the Lord has called us to do as the fishermen were washing their nets, even though there is not much or nothing we can get out of it from our human perspective. So what is it that you believe God has called you to do for those in your life, and for your colleagues and friends, or for your church? Does it require your patience, your commitment, your money, your obedience, your forgiveness? And does it work or does it not? Jesus said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Simon Peter didn't ask Jesus to help him with fishing because he knew that Jesus was not a fisherman but a carpenter. Yet our Lord knew Simon's struggle and the issues at hand, and he also knew Simon's needs, which was food for his daily living, and also his deep spiritual need he had, which he didn't realize at that time. Then our Lord told him to go out where it is deeper and let down his nets. As you know, the nets the fishermen had back then were not for the deep water fishing. But Jesus told him to let down his nets there. 
and Simon caught a large number of fish, the number that he had never caught before. And I believe there is God's time for everyone to realize His wonderful plan. Though times like these may look like the fishermen washing their nets with no clear plans for their future. As you keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do and try to be what He has called you to be, the Lord knows, the Lord who knows you and your journey and your struggle as you try to live out your faith will reveal His plan and reward you with His heavenly blessing in His time. Yet with this, when His time comes, our Lord might lead you to do the things that may not be familiar to you. And the Spirit of the Lord might get you to walk a different path or want you to meet people whom you haven't met before or give you a prayerful heart for a particular person or a community or a nation. 1 Peter 5, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Psalm 126, Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. Matthew 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So if we trust in God's faithfulness, let us be a bit more patient and wait for God's time to come in our lives. Verse 5 of today's passage, it says, Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night, all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I will let the nets down again. It is obvious that the catching of the large number of fish, the miracle, was possible because Simon followed what our Lord told him to do. It was not what he would have expected to hear from someone who didn't know much about fishing. And the time was not right for him to pick up the nets and to go out again to fish. But because Jesus said so, Simon followed his instruction. He could have told Jesus, Teacher, my friend and I have spent all night without success, and we've just washed the nets for another day's work. And you tell me to go out again now? Are you kidding me? The passage doesn't tell us what happened to Simon, but somehow he simply followed what Jesus told him to do. I believe this seems to teach us again what our Lord wants us to focus on during this pandemic. It is about listening and getting deeper into the living Word of God and following what the Word guides us to do and to be. Since this pandemic began, all of us would have spent more time on the social media for the news update and other issues relating health, safety, and future directions, and also keeping connection with others. And I wonder how and where you have found encouragement and positivity in your life during the pandemic. And how many news articles or social media posts or YouTube videos which you believe have filled the needs of your soul? Not many, I guess, if it is not related to the strength and the encouragement which come from the eternal living Word of God. 
The more we feel stressed, the more we want to seek comfort from the world. The more we are not sure of, the, of our future, the more we want to seek guidance from the world. And the more we get anxious about what's going on in our lives, the deeper we want to go into the word of the word, into the word of the Lord. I believe it is what the Holy Spirit who lives in us always encourages us to do, which is not about following human voices or the trend of the time, no matter how promising they might sound, but about getting closer and going deeper into the Word of God. I enjoy listening to the morning psalms during the week. And I also enjoy listening to different voices of our church family. One of the psalm readings was Psalm 119 by Kathy during the week. I actually listened to that psalm in the morning around six times. I read the psalm many times before, but on that Thursday morning, the reading really spoke to my heart and resided deeply in my heart because it was so refreshing and encouraging. As I listened to the psalm, I could not really count how many times I said Amen and Amen and Amen after each verse. So I looked up some Bible commentaries to learn why this particular psalm spoke to my heart. And I found out that this longest psalm was written throughout the author's entire faith journey in the Lord. And it was about what the author valued most in his life, which is living with and in the Word of God. And I also found out some great people of faith in the past have memorized this whole psalm, which has 176 verses, and found great blessing in doing so. People like John Ruskin, William Wilberforce, Henry Martin, David Livingstone, and Matthew Henry. I believe the hope and the encouragement that we find by reflecting and meditating on the living Word of God cannot be compared to what the world promises to give. Because God's Word speaks to our hearts and searches deepest part of our being and brings healing and encouragement for us. So I'd like to encourage us to value both written and spoken Word of God and to meditate on it on a regular basis. Let us let the Word of God speak to us and follow what it inspires us to do as Simon Peter listened and obeyed what Jesus told him to do. In verse 8 of today's passage, it says, When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. Finally, this pandemic, I believe, provides us with an opportunity to renew our hearts and to restore our faith in the Lord. When people get stressed and feel frustrated, it is not unusual to react in a not healthy way, making unnecessary complaints and also projecting their own frustration to others who are close to them or pointing fingers to others. And it can cause misunderstanding, hurts and regrets. However, though it might be regarded as natural human reactions to stressful situations, that doesn't mean that we can justify our own words, actions, or attitudes. As Simon did in the story today, we often need to kneel down before the Lord and repent for what the Holy Spirit leads us to repent. What is it that made Simon Peter call himself a sinner? Why did he fall to his knees before Jesus? Perhaps he might have realized how stubborn he was, not wanting to change what, we, what he believed to be right before the Lord. Or he might have seen his self-righteousness 
which was deeply rooted in his heart, or his unbelief, or lack of faith in God. Yet through the challenge, he made him, which made him sort of give up on what was familiar to him. He was able to have an opportunity to see himself in a deeper sense, and because of his restored humility, he was able to reach a point where he honestly confessed to the Lord how sinful a person he was, and it helped him to completely renew his relationship with Jesus. Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. Let's listen to our Lord's comforting and empowering words to this vulnerable fisherman, Simon Peter. Don't be afraid, Simon. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Do not be afraid, Simon. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Simon wanted Jesus to leave him because he thought that he was such a sinful man to be with him. But to his surprise, rather than judging him, Jesus comforted him and called him to be his disciple, and gave him a wonderful mission to be a fisher of men. I wonder if any of us might have felt a prompting of the Spirit to be like Simon, and to repent like Simon did during these challenging times. If you can try to listen carefully to what the Lord wants to speak to us, this pandemic might give us a wonderful opportunity to renew our faith and to restore our relationship with the Lord. What would fishers of men look like in 2022? Bless you all. Amen.